a universal interface. Many years ago, I went with a friend to Nakhon Patom to go and get some Sakyan Thai temple tattoos. My friend was, his name was Sean, and I remember him telling me that his profession was uh, interface. He taught web designers and uh, designers, developers about interfacing. And it got me thinking at that time, interface. I didn't really understand the full meaning of the word. And so it got me thinking. And over the years, this was many years ago, this word stuck with me and I kind of applied it to my thinking in many ways, including during my time when I was hanging around in temples and practicing vipassana. And I later ordained as a Buddhist monk and went to the forest as often as possible to practice. And this word still remained useful to me. So let's get down into the word interface. <laughs> what is an interface? Well, as some of you know, I'm a webmaster. I have to design and uh, administrate websites. When you open your computer and you look at a website in your browser, that is an interface. The, the, the actual stuff you are looking at doesn't exist as you're seeing it. It's just code. It's just binary. It's zeros and ones. A machine code, which gets turned into HTML code and PHP code and SQL database code, and they all communicate with each other. And then there's a code to display on the screen, which tells the computer how to display as a visual image the information you are looking at and that's where you see your web page or that's where you see your folder icons on your computer or you see all of the graphic interface or your toolbars and that's called a graphic interface and that is what allows you to visually and intuitively work with something that is essentially invisible to you the way a computer works and the way it processes the data it's all invisible it's not material it's not physical it's just uh, frequencies and basic binary code just running and in order for us to see it as humans we need this interface which translate it into an understandable form so we can see it or hear it or interact with it by typing or touching the screen or whatever. So if you can think of your computer screen as an interface or your TV screen as an interface so that you can interface with the virtual world of the internet and wireless technology, TV, movies, Go into Apple TV or iTunes or your Touchcast or what uh, your your Chromecast or just through the antenna on your screen. And so that's your interface. Uh, how you interface with the world, where that's as if you have two planes come together, two surfaces come together and interact with each other. Two component components of a piece of machinery interlock, interleave and move with each other in harmony. They're interfacing with each other and uh, interacting with each other. Mm. Just as we do as people, when we talk to each other or we exchange information. And so there is an exchange of information or data uh, <coughs> happening when you interact with your computer and you do that through the interface. Right, so how did this useful to me when I was a monk meditating or when I was when I practiced vipassana because the world itself and how we perceive it is also through an interface the interface of our senses we have physical sensations of against the the, the senses of the skin of touch touch against the tongue will bring taste touch against the olfactory nerves will bring smells touch of the eyes of the light 
rays, photons on the retina will bring images and color and the sensation of light. Closing your eyes without using your eyes and daydreaming or meditating and focusing or even daydreaming or sleeping and dreaming, you also see images. You can see dreams or visions and you can't see anything without light. And so the images you see, considering there's no eyes and no sunlight when your eyes are closed, they're still luminous. And so the luminosity in the light is also perceivable without the eyes, that is inner light. And there is the material photon light, which is through the retina. So your interface with the universe around you, it's not just around you, it's permeating you because you are also part of the universe. It permeates everything, and so you can interface with this, and that is an, also an interface. And our senses are the interface for us to interact with reality and the universe. And of course this is when we interact, there are causes and effects come into events happen, and those events are causes of other events and it sets a wheel in motion, like evolution, and, and changes in many ways. It causes evolution, sets that ball rolling. It causes us to advance through politics, through war, through genetic advancement, through science. Every little thing we interface with and interleave with and interact with has a karma, has a cause and effect, has a result, and causes changes and all of this is because of interfacing the whole of reality we perceive not just the computer and its screen but the screen of your retina the screen of your mind which is like a, a movie screen and you project things onto it all of these are in between things which we use as an interface to be able to interact with those things within and without. There is an inner world and an outer world and we have inner senses and outer senses and those are our interfacing tools. And so if you understand how computing uses interfacing, you can perhaps understand how reality and the experience of being also uses interfacing. You are in your brain is like an embryo co coiled up inside your skull and your skull has eyes and your body has fingers and you have a tongue and ears to hear sounds with and nose to smell things with and all of these interfaces of the senses and you can take information from around outside and you can experience and see and feel them inside, inside the skull but in truth, the brain can never come directly in contact with the world. It has to use the interfaces between itself and the world. And that is how our experience of being happens. And that is the interface between the brain inside the skull and that which is happening outside of the skull. It's the interface of your senses. And so the mind is the universal interface, is the headquarters through which all of the other senses, all of the other interfacing tools are centralized and processed. That's like the CPU of the computer, where the graphic information, the database information, the input and the output are all processed. And one's actions and deeds are processed. And one's future actions and reactions are processed. <coughs> So if you understand computing, when you're using the computer, realize that that is actually a perfect metaphor and reflection for how we interface with the world and with other sentient beings. And realize that the universal interface is everywhere and it's what allows us to be with each other. And that was some quantum dhamma, not some Buddha dhamma, it's quantum dhamma which you can contemplate and see which parts of it might be true for you and see if it's useful you can take it and if it's not
then don't. I'm Sajan Spencer with Quantum Dhamma Podcast signing off.